It's so wonderful to see each and every one of you on this that we that we have uh, given the subject each second Sunday of September as the Gideon Sunday. Amen. Amen. And we are thankful to have our Gideon representative, of which we will be hearing from him a little later. At this time, I hope you have a worship sheet. And if not, then you can, uh, uh, if you will, get one, because I want you to hold on to it. We may have to do an addendum to it. Amen. Amen. We are happy to see you. We're getting ready to start our worship. Brother Green, yeah. how are we this morning? Yeah. All right, I hope we're ready. We're ready. We're gonna... <laughs> Amen. Sister so Star, how are we this morning? Good. All right. All right, everybody good? All right, let us stand. And our first selection is going to be our trust in the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank God for the backup uh, audio personnel this morning. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. I will not leave you as an offering. I will come to you. You may be saved. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's bow together. Eternal and everlasting Lord, the God of our fathers before us, we thank God for your loving kindness and tender mercies. And we realize, oh Lord, that we are your children. We are the children of the Most High. Yeah. And we praise you. We give yeah. you glory. Yeah. Yeah. Because we realize that. Yeah. Yeah. That we are not our own. Yeah. That's right. That we have been bought with a price. Thank you, Lord God. And we are celebrating you, Lord. Because you. you are the only yeah. true and living God. Yeah. That's our worship yeah. as we go yeah. through. And let it be received in heaven yeah. with joy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let us all say amen. 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 <laughs> Our announcements, my brothers and sisters, as you can see, and we want to thank you for your contributions, for our special effort for the uh, Hurricane Ida victims. It's not too late. The church has contributed. And what we do whenever I get, whenever I ask for you for a special offer, what we do is we take your offer. You make it to the church. We take your offer and put it together. And then we have a bulk offering from the Mount Island Baptist Church. That is why I'm going to the second. Today is Gideon Day. And all, we always provide an offering for the Gideons. What I want you to do, if you want to write a check, write the check to the Mount Island Baptist Church. Well, we compile everything and we will give to the Gideon representative a check for the, from the Mount Island Baptist Church family for a gift to Gideon. Amen? Amen. So if you haven't given, or if you haven't already left your envelope, then you may do so. On that envelope, please write Gideon up, in the, up on the top. Make it out to Mount Island. Make the check out to Mount Island. Write Gideon. We always take your offering and then we add from our from the church itself. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this point, then, without any further ado, by by consent and decree, our good friend, Brother Arthur Bush, is coming. Now let me tell you, uh, I was out when he came, he's been here before. And I was out. And uh, he reminded me. And several of you remember, if you were here, I think that was a little about 2017. He's here again, and, and I want to say my popular demand. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I bring you greetings from my hometown of Manny, Louisiana, where I'm a member of the Bethel Baptist Church. My pastor is the Reverend Martin Scott. But I'm a member of the Hemp Hill St. Augustine Gideon Camp in the East Texas area. I've been a member for the past 15 years, and for seven of those years, I have been what we call an area director. For five years, I was the lone black area director here in the state of Texas out of 25 in the Area 9. I've since moved out to Area 10 near the deep East Texas area, Nacogdoches, Lufkin area, St. Augustine Hemp Hill. So it's an honor for me to be with you all again this morning, and I thank you, Pastor Roberts, for the invitation as well as accepting me, and I hope you enjoy my testimony. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Mr. Joe Ladner from St. Augustine, Texas. I met him at a Little League baseball game in June of 2003. I had on an LSU 2003 football national championship t-shirt and LSU football shorts and he came up to me and introduced himself to me and asked did I graduate from LSU. I said no sir I graduated from McNeese and so we had a conversation and then he went to sit down in his chair that he had but before he left he showed me his uh, LSU graduating ring where he graduated in forestry. He then left to walk away to sit with his best friend, Mr. Thurman Bridges from Arcadia, Louisiana. And he walked back to his seat by from here to the parking lot out there. And we were standing on those steps right there on the left. And he walked to the top of that picture on the right. And I had an intuition 
that came over me that said, there's something about that man. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but there's something about that man. Mm -hmm. There's something he needs to tell me or there's something he needs to show me, but I need to be around that man. Wow. So I would go by his house. I mean, as far as your office there on the left, and we would talk about him going up in Mississippi, LSU, and then he invited me to some of the Bible study sessions that he had on his home on Wednesday night. And in the beginning, he would begin to slowly sneak in conversations about the Gideons, but I really didn't want to hear that. And so finally, after 2006, I told myself I needed to join. And so I would see the Gideons when they came to the school to distribute the Bibles to the fifth graders, but I never saw any black men. So consequently, I never had any interest in joining. And as I say, finally in 2006, I chose to join and became a member. Now I'm gonna transition into my dad's life. My father, Arthur James Bush, was 99 years old, 51 days away from 100. He was a World War II veteran. He fought on the front line as a gunner. Sadly, he died on June 10th of 2018 from bleeding on the brain and complications of pneumonia. A month later, on July 6th, my then 93-year-old mother, Evelyn, called me on a Friday night. She said, I want you to come over. I have something to give to you that I know you would want to have. When I walked in, there were three Bibles lying on my dad's bed. One big Bible, heavily taped, with my dad's name on it, and two little small testaments. When I opened up the big Bible, I saw these words. This Bible was placed by the Gideons. I started trembling, and shaking. I said, Lord, what's going on here? Daddy, why didn't you tell me you had this Bible? Then I looked on the opposite page and I saw where my dad had received that Bible on May 30th, 1944 mm -hmm. in the Netherlands, Indies and South Pacific. Wow. Well, now I'm trembling and shaking like, Daddy, what's going on? Lord, what, what's happening here? Then my mother is holding the cover of one of the little small testaments and she says, you see that hole right there? And I say, yes. She said, well, your daddy told me he got shot during the war. He had this Bible in his pocket and it saved his life. And I said, Lord, what are you and my daddy doing to me? Well, what's going on here? I'm not understanding this, Lord. And that's the remainder of that Bible. And then I opened up the third Bible and I saw these words, the White House, Washington, and there's a note from President Franklin Roosevelt recommending that the men read their Bibles during the war. Mm. So now I'm holding a piece of American history, and I've later found out that only 56,000 of these Bibles were printed. Then I look on the back of that Bible, and my daddy wrote this note. This Bible went to war with me, mm -hmm. November 1942. So for the next three weeks, I'm losing my mind. I can't think. I can't sleep. I can't eat. Like, Daddy, why didn't you tell me some stories? Daddy, why didn't you tell me you had these Bibles? Daddy, why didn't you say something? You knew I was involved with the Gideons. And so finally, three weeks later, the Lord told me it was not meant for your daddy to tell you he had these Bibles. It was meant for me to show you. And that way, it will have a much greater impact. And I said, okay, Lord, I can go along with that. So I would go by my daddy's grave and just ask him, Daddy, why didn't you tell me some stories? Daddy, why didn't you say something? Daddy, why didn't you share something with me that I could take and tell people about? And so finally, like I said, the Lord gave me that information and that's it. And I was also told that uh, if I was going to the International Convention in New Orleans, I needed to bring the Bibles and we would find someone to share those Bibles with. And I said, okay. I said, all I want to do is just get somebody to take pictures. And so as I'm going to the pastor's banquet there at the convention center in New Orleans, it's 10 blocks long. I'm looking down the left hallway and that young lady right there, Abigail Bass, is standing in front of me. And she says, excuse me, may I take a picture of the two of you, my buddy with me? And he says, sure, you can take our picture. And then he asked her the conversation. Are you with the crew from New Orleans that's covering the convention? 
She says, no, I went international. I'm the official photographer. And I said, okay, I have a question to ask you when we finish taking this picture. And so we take the picture and then I tell her about my dad's Bibles. And I said, I have those back in the hotel room. After the banquet is over, I'll go up and get them and I want you to just take pictures of them. She said, sure, I definitely want to do that. So I said, okay, let's exchange business cards. So we did. Then I get a text from her 30 minutes later and I step outside and I call her and she says, we're definitely going to interview you tonight and we'll take pictures of the Bibles. And I said, okay, I'll answer a few questions you have. I just want you to take pictures. She says, no, we're going to interview you. And I said, okay, I'll answer a few questions. I just want you to take pictures. She said, you're really not understanding. <laughs> yes, I understand. No, you're not understanding. We're going to interview you on camera. I said, oh, no, we are not doing that. <laughs> she said, yes, we're going to interview you on camera. The camera crew is already here. The camera is already set up in the ballroom. We're going to let you tell your story, let you tell your dad's story. Mm. I said, look, I just want you to take pictures. <laughs> she says, no, we're going to interview you. And you know, all of this is going to go out worldwide. Wow. And I said, oh, no, we are not doing that. <laughs> and so we go and do the interview, and I'm sitting there holding my dad's Bibles mm. an hour later, and I said, Lord, I just wanted her to take pictures. Mm. And he's telling me, Isaiah 55 and 8, mm. your thoughts mm. are not my thoughts. Wow. Your ways are not my ways. Listen. I want the world to know about Arthur Bush the father and Arthur Bush the son. Mm. And so in the January 2019 issue of our international magazine, a four-page story mm. came out about my daddy, Mr. Ladner, and myself. Gosh. Never in a million years could I ever imagine that I would be in a magazine sent out to uh. over 200 countries around the world mm. and to over 330,000 men and women reading about a coward from Manny, Louisiana <laughs> that was too afraid to join mm. because for three years I would go to those Bible study sessions with Mr. Ladner and he would always ask me what I joined and I was afraid, mm. and I was afraid of one thing, and one thing only, and that was standing in a white pulpit, mm. because they told me they wanted me to speak in white churches, mm. and I could never see myself doing that, and it scared me. <laughs> and so I lied to him for three years. Mm. I lied on my daddy, mm. I lied on my pastor, mm -hmm. saying they didn't want me to join. But it was me that was too afraid. And so for the last 13 years, I have stood in more white pulpits than I have passed by black churches. And I'm so thankful that Mr. Ladner never gave up on me. And he pursued me to join. And it's been the greatest thing that I've ever been a part of. And I do have my dad's original Bibles here. Also along with a picture frame of his commendations that has the authentic autograph of President Harry Truman. Oh, wow. You see, those Bibles sat in my dad's bedroom closet for 50 years. Mm. I looked in there hundreds of times and mm. never saw them. Yes. And I keep yes. beating myself up. Daddy, where were you hiding these Bibles? Daddy, why didn't I see these Bibles? Mm. And so I'm so thankful that Mr. Ladner did what he did. He never gave up on me. He saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And it's been a blessing and an honor for me to be in this ministry. And I'm so thankful. And thank you all for allowing me to share my testimony. And all of God's children say amen. 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 We're going to put those, if you don't mind, before you leave on um, B.
display out in the foyer so yes. okay. yeah. the people or members can see. Man, man, man. Man. You lived up to everything you said. He wouldn't tell me on the phone about his testimony, but he said, you don't want to miss it. He said, it's, it's so powerful, so I'll try to make you through it without shedding tears. And I like to shed the tears for you. If I'd have given you the 30 minute version, you would have. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to have you come back and we get that 30 minute version. Amen. 50 years in your dad's class. 50 years. My, my, my. Church, let's say amen. amen. Wasn't that powerful? It's all the more worthy. Amen. Everything we can do to see to it that the world receives the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Green? Amen. Amen. If you have you reached your composure too? Yes. I am just oh, oh just stirred from the inside out. Amen. We'll have a selection from Brother Green. Amen. Bless the Lord. Seven. If you have it, let's stand together. 
and we'll read God's word together. It is also from the English Standard Version, so it will be a little different from the King James. Shall we? Let not your hearts be troubled. Believing in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are all many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you, you know the way, way where I go. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and I can you know the way. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing on his readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may be seated. Amen. Let's bow our heads together in prayer for the good and powerful God. Eternal God, what a blessed testimony you sent this morning. Thank you for Brother Bush. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for all of the worshipers this morning. Thank you, Lord. And may their spiritual needs be met. Yes, Lord. That they would lay forth themselves bare to you. For you know our hearts. You know, the psalmist said, our uprisings, and you know our downsides. Yes, yes. Because you are our God. We want to praise your holy name and to say unto you, glory, 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 glory to the most high. Yes, Lord God. Whose power radiates through the earth and throughout the universe. Yes. Oh, glory to your name. Yes, Lord. And may your name forever be praised. Yes. Yes. Lord, we come before you to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks be unto the living God. Yes. The God who provides for us. The God who was first who created us. Yes. Yes. And provides for us. Each and every day. And we go so many times, Lord, and never pay homage to you, taking everything for granted. But every time our eyelids back and our heart beat, it's all because of your goodness and your grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. From the bottom of our home. 10,000 talk couldn't say thank you enough. Now, Lord, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who gives us the right to eternal life through faith in him. You've adopted us. Through faith in him, you've given us salvation. Through faith in him, we can claim eternal life. Now, Master, in this world we live in, you know what's going on around us. We still are plagued with this pandemic. But, Lord, we know that you have your own set time. Yes. Yeah. Everything is done in the fullness of time as your word so described. Help us to be obedient. And realize this is not about us. Yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not about what we can do and how, how we can change things. It's not about politics or whatever. It's about mankind realizing yes. that he, the almighty God, sits at the, at the throne yes. and rules and super rules this world. Yes. Humble out. Help us to 
humble ourselves. If my people. Yes, Lord. You said to Solomon, if my people yes. that are called by my name yes, will humble themselves oh, and pray. Seek my face. Yes. Help America to realize and help this whole world yes. to know that we must seek your face. Now be merciful, Lord, to those who are suffering in the hospitals. Yes. And Lord, so many all across this nation are just overcrowded. So many of our health care facilities and health care workers are overpowered. Over, overpowered and, over, and overburdened. Yes. Yes. Help us to survive, Lord. Yes, Lord God. Those who are sick with COVID up, whatever the sickness might be, have them know that all sickness is still in your hands. Oh, yes, all cures, there's no cure apart from you providing. So Lord, please bless. Bless those that are sick among us. Bless this, those who are bereaved, who are heartbroken over the loss of a loved one. Yeah. And then Master, if you provided the resource and the blessing of vaccination, help our people yes. to lay aside these man-made whatever and do that that you desire for us to do. Now, Lord, those that are motherless, those that are fatherless, those who are just wondering which way should I go, yes. their lives are in shambles and sin. Yes. Yes. They don't know that where well, they're going to come, they are despair, disturbed. All of these things made the word of God find them and then call upon your son Jesus that you can give meaning to their life and show them who we Thank you, oh Lord, for this opportunity to praise you. Thank you, oh Lord, for this opportunity to speak in behalf of your son Jesus. Bless the word this morning and may it go forth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the blessed name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. Amen. The hymn of the morning. Excuse me. The hymn of the morning. Where he leads. Oh Lord. I will follow. Brother Green go to lead us. Let's stand. Where he leads. You are the Yahweh now. And Sister Bay, come with him.
Amen. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. And that's a powerful statement. Amen. You know, Reverend, <coughs> what? Reverend George Raven, I miss him too. He, he was good at one line. He would say, you can tell a lie. And you can sing them. <laughs> Bless his heart. Now when you sing it, you're supposed to be me. I'll go with him. And then it says it again. With him. All. All the way. Glory to God. God bless you. May God keep you. If you will. Open your Bibles, and we are, again, we, are, we, we use the English Standard Version. As I told you, there was one word in that text earlier that I wanted to bring forth to you. And so I took it from the English Standard Version because it uses that word. And we're going to dive into it. This is somewhat of a continuation of a message that we begun a couple of weeks ago about adoption. We talked about the, the doctrine of adoption about two weeks ago. Amen. That we are adopted. Thank you, Sister Banks. Thank you, Sister Starr. Thank you, Brother Green. Amen. You know right? Amen. Um, that the doctrine of adoption is that through faith, once we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and place our life in Him, uh, Paul says to the Galatians and in Romans chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, then we become adopted as sons and daughters. Help me somebody. You all remember any of that? No, I don't think so. So I guess I got to go back and preach that other one first. And then come back. Amen. That we are no longer, as long as we are not saved, as long as we have professed faith in Jesus Christ, that we are aliens. Because we are sinners, unconfessed un, uh, sinners, not having received the, glory, the, the mercy and forgiveness of God. Therefore, then, we are, can't be part of the airship. You can talk about heaven all you want to, but you're not going to be an heir of heaven until you accept Jesus as your Savior. All right? So with that premise there, I'm going to read, let us read, I'm going to read the text. The text is John 14, verse 18. I will not leave you as an orphan or orphans. I will come to you. I know. Hmm. Now, let me show you why I had it, I read it. From the, uh, rather used it from the English Standard because when you read it from the King James, you have a different word. Verse 18 of the 14th chapter I will not leave you comfortless. All right. I will come to you. Well, why did they use, why did the King James in 1611 use comfortless? And now the, the English Standard says orphans. Well, if you really look at the word from the original text, in the original Greek, the word for comfortless means not without, being without help. 
Anyone without help must be fatherless. Somebody help me. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's the word. That's why you need to, 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 to when you read anything in the, in the word, you need to compare it in various scriptures and then do a word search. What Jesus is saying is, I am the Father. I am in the Father that I'm going to talk about alone, and the Father is in me. I'm not going to leave you guys, you 12 disciples, I'm not going to leave you guys and make you an offering. <laughs> Woo, look. Am I anywhere? Is that making any kind of sense? I'm not going to leave you. He, he's getting ready. He, he's preparing them. They've had the Lord's Supper, which is the last supper, or which we talked about last week. Y'all remember that? Okay. And now he is on his way to return. Well, first, he's on his way to the cross. And that very night, from chapter 8, from chapter 13, through 17 has to do all of what's going on between from the Lord's Supper to the time he's arrested in the book of John. Covering some five or six hours, probably. That's 14, 13, when they get there and begin to eat, through 17, when he, when he ends the prayer. And you know the bad thing about it? They still had not gotten it. He's telling them, I'm going to send you a competent. Yeah. I'm not going to leave. You guys, I have been your father on earth. Yeah. For three and a half years, I have been your father. I have been right there for you. Yeah. Doing everything for you. Right. Telling you, showing you. I'm about to leave. Well, where am I going? Where are you going? Well, where I am going you can't follow me right now. <laughs> yeah, you can't follow me right now. Yes, sir. Well, Green, you check and see if that mic is on. We want, we want it on. You can't see it right now. You, you can't go with me right now. But I'm not going to leave you fatherless. <laughs> well, let's go on. Who is an orphan? Well, in today's tradition, Anybody, anyone that's parentless, for whatever reason, have no parents, is considered an orphan. But in biblical times, it wasn't that way. Anyone who was fatherless, they may have mother, grandfather, granddaddy, I mean grandmother and all. If they were fatherless, no father in the home, whatever happened to them, they were considered orphans. That's why in the 42 times that the word often is used in the Bible, it's uh, uh, 40 of them always referring to the fatherless. So now you can do not so now you can do a word search. And see if I'm telling the truth. Yeah, just go do a word search on far, on off. Do it in the King James or do it in the in, in, in the standard. So the concept of being an orphan, if you go back to the original, to the uh, original concept that used in biblical times, we have a whole lot of orphans. Am I anywhere? I'm going to say that again. In biblical times, the fatherless, anybody fathers, he may have his grandmother, his, I mean his mother, grandmother, great grandmother, aunt, and all of that. But if he or she was fatherless. They were orphans. They know that. I hear, I can hear some God in that. God wanted to make sure we understood that that the fraternal side, nothing against the maternal, don't, don't misunderstand me, don't go around. Reverend Robert said, no, I didn't say that. Now. <laughs> I didn't say that one was over the other, maternal or fraternal. But in God's eyes, 
and he's evil and enjoy Whether you, regardless of what happened in the household, it, if it was without a father, it was an orphan, an orphanage situation. So, let's go on with that premise then. God, in Christ, we are adopted, as I told you. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 6, and verse 18, he says, you shall, you will become sons and daughters. Am I anywhere? Amen. Also, you can write in that little spot beside it, Galatians 4, 5, and 6. Galatians 4, 5, and 6. You should, can't go with that. Because that's how, he said, in, Duke, in the fullness of time, God brought forth his son, born of a woman, so that we can become sons and daughters, so to speak, and that we can cry through the Holy Spirit, our Father. We are adopted. Well, what privileges do we have by us being adopted by God? We can have our access to God. <coughs> we have access to God. Yes. You, you, with before Jesus Christ, the only way to get to God was through the priest or through through the the the, the priestly order. But when Jesus came, Jesus broke the barrier between the Father and his subjects by standing in between and standing in for us. Right. Someone ought to help me here. And his sacrificial, sacrificial death made us free from the penalty of sin. Right. So we were no longer then without the presence of our Father. Woo! If you are not in Christ Jesus, then you are fatherless. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You going right here worry about all these people and then you know, that's that's good, bro. You worry about the people that don't have physical parents, physical the the orphans. In, 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 in real life. But in the spiritual life, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have a father. All right. Amen. You may have a whole lot of other things, but you don't have a father. Yeah. Because the only way that Christ is going to acknowledge you, I mean, God is going to acknowledge you as his son or daughter is through Jesus Christ. Well, I'm glad that I got this privilege. I have access to him. He, I am a brethren of Christ. Yeah, this is I feel in Ephesians chapter 1 through 15. I am one of Christ's brothers. In other words, Christ looks at me as his brother. Yes, he looks at you or any female that's in him as his sister. When God looks, he says, yes, those are the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Woo! Somebody always shocked just off of that. Good God Almighty. Yes, yes, yes. I am in the household of God. But now why does God want us to be adopted? Well, if we go to the next outline, I tell you what I why. It's because we have become the image of God. We are truly the image of God now because we are adopted into his household. Christ in the Father, that's in chapter four, uh, chapter 14, verse 20. Christ in the Father and you in me. All right. In other words, God has, has placed a little of us, a little of him in all of us through Christ Jesus. Are you following that? Jesus says to his disciples, look, now that I have you have become a part of my fellowship, you have come into me. Then you, then you are part of the Father because I am. You know, you, that puts you in. You've been saying you were somebody, but now you know you're somebody. 
Amen. I mean, you're somebody not to be not to be going around and right. chest stuck out because it wasn't on our it wasn't it, no it wasn't on our doing. We were all sinners. We were all depraved. We were all away from God. But thank God He provided a way. So God has adopted me. And I am a part of his adoption. Well, since I am, what, what, what should I do? Well, the purpose of adoption, I, I believe, is God wants us to become adoptive. If he can take a rich like me, and a rich like you Amen. and bring you into his household. Mm. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm about to rest my case. I, I'm going to pick this up again. Yeah. I want you to go up and think about this and come back. Yeah, yeah. If he has taken me in his household, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, dirty me? Mm. Yes, yes. What, what, did, what did Isaiah say? All of our righteousness? Even with our best perfume on, <laughs> it's still like dirty, filthy rags. <laughs> Somebody help me here. Yeah. You got on your best rags. <laughs> yes, you pay top dollar for them. But when God looks at you, if you are unconfessed and, uh, and have not accepted Jesus, you're, oh Lord, you just, mm, Amen. help me, Lord Jesus. Amen. But look, he provided a way to bring us into his household. Amen. And since he did, and nasty us, he has made us righteous. Thank you, Lord. He has justified us. Yeah. Well, you hear Paul said in, in Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified by faith. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm adopted. Yeah. Okay. Well, what the, why did you adopt me, Lord? Well, you may have adopted, you, you adopted me because you wanted me to practice what James called the pure religion. Notice, and if you don't, I want you to, that's why I want you to carry you back home because so I want you to study. John, James said, a pure, pure religion. You talk about your religion, it's more than that. It's more than that. That's all right right here. But we need some of this out there. Can I get a witness? He said a pure religion. Undefiled before God and the Father is to visit. Yes. That's it, Praise God. Not, not the football game. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's to visit, not the Cowboys. <laughs> That's all right, but don't. No, yeah, yeah, but, but you don't get any marks from Christ for that. It's to visit the widows and the orphans. Yeah. And to keep yourself unspotted before the world. Didn't say anything about how you can sing amazing right. <coughs> Top on the list. If you are to be adopted, and you have been adopted, then you have a role to play. I don't want you to be adopted and just sit there somewhere with your ice tea in the yeah. shade. Yeah. <laughs> I don't adopt you for that. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Or go just always think about pleasure, you know. I want you to put your adoptiveness into adopting state. Can I get a witness? I'm closing. Listen what he said. The world needs adopting. Am I anywhere? The world needs adopting. You know what? Let me give you some examples. The lost need to be adopted. Everybody that don't know Jesus Christ need to have the testimony. The lost need to be adopted. Don't look down on them. They're just like you were. You, you, were, you, were, you were without Christ. So if they're without a Christ, yeah, they're going to talk bad and maybe smell bad or whatever the case might be and say some things you shouldn't. But you must remember you were adopted in spite of your situation. Can I get a witness? You got to adopt those who are not 
like you. Can I get you? Amen. Yeah. Well, what about the father, fatherless, fatherlessness, I call it. That's all of it. Fatherlessness. That means not necessarily, you may not be an orphan in our daily family, but if you don't have someone to be a father, that's what mighty men is all about. Somebody ought to help me here. It's an adoption agency. Yes, sir. When we had the program, or when Brother Brandon had, and they had the program, it was about how they had adopted guys to help them to become fathers. Amen. Yes. And we need a lot of that. Yes. Or should I say, we need much of that. Yes, sir. And this so called at risk, I don't like to think of it at risk. I like to think of it at need. <laughs> you know, risk makes it sound naked. Woo. Yeah. At need. At need, whatever it is. Whether it be from the educational standpoint, whether it be from the social standpoint, whether it be from the financial standpoint, if there are some at need people around, <laughs> we ought to be adopted. I'm going to tell you this, I close. I know this is the third time I see it. I'm going to tell you this. But, 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 but those of you who are Bible scholars, you have looked in chapter 25 of Matthew. Amen. Stroll over to about verse 30. And Jesus began to tell what it's going to look like. I don't say that I have ascended well enough to know the whole meaning of all. There are many interpretations. Some say he's only speaking to Israel. Yeah. You know, that gets us off the hook then. Yeah. No, I don't think that's the right interpretation. In there, he talks about what he's going to do. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. Put the Goats on the left and the sheep on the right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he says that he's going to say, then he begin to tell them that uh, come ye blessed of my father, that when I was sick, uh, I'm just going through you, yeah, paraphrase, you visited me. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. When I was hungry, you fed me. Amen. When Thank I was clothesless, you, you bought clothes for me. Thank you, Lord. You all didn't hear what I said. And, 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 and then those folk he's talking to, they replied back to him and said, Lord, when saw we be hungry, sick, in prison, and all of these things? He said, listen, when you've done it to the least of these, my brother, and, 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 and I heard one preacher say, one minister say in a sermon, said when he was speaking about the least of these, my brother, he was pointing at the masses out there. When you have done to the least of these, my brethren, yeah. you've done it unto me. Yeah. Amen. 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 In other words, you have adopted them in my name. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. And when he gave the great commission, I just think that was an adoptive order, a charge for adoption. Go into all the world. What to do when they go, when I go, just go and stand No, He said, go into all the world, baptizing, and teaching. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Whatsoever I've commanded to you, don't you sit around with the Bible on your arm and say, hallelujah, I'm on my way to glory. Go into all the world. Adopt somebody. Many of them don't even know they need to be adopted. Most of them don't. For if they did, they'd be trying their best to sign up. Where he leaves me, is that what you want? Well, that what, well if, 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 if this Bible means anything, he's leading us toward other folks. Where he leaves me, I will follow and notice, I'll go with him. With him. Because he died that Friday. On Calvary. On, my Savior died. Do you hear what 
God said he died yeah. for my sin. Yeah. He died while I was a wretch undone. Uh -huh. He died that Friday evening, a criminal's death. Yeah. And on that Saturday, each that Friday evening, they laid him in Joseph's tomb. This is the gospels. Mm -hmm. And this is what the gospel tells. Yeah. And then on that Friday night, he lay there. On that Saturday and Saturday night, but all of the four Gospels conclude by saying early. Early. E A R L Y. Early. Early. Glory to God. Don't, if you don't want to take Matthew's word for it, go to, go to, go to Mark. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to take Mark's word for it, go to Luke. Yeah. If you don't want to take Luke's word for it, go to John. And then on top of that, Paul came back and said, and, later, and years later, he said, the resurrection of God yeah. on the first day of Jesus, on the first day of the week. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Come. I think some people around here ready to do some adopting. I happened to see where I came. I've been watching him. <coughs> and uh, Brandon, you remember? Mm -hmm. You remember talks? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. But he got me back in the day when he came here. He was younger. So I didn't recognize him when I see him across me. But I kept watching him go back and forth across the street. I went down, went around the building. Then he was sitting in the shade of the church. <laughs> After he made me know who he was, I was surprised. And how the Lord, how how how, how Satan, what Satan had done to him. So I told him, I said, well, right here or in the old building is where we met years ago. You and all the others. And you were in high school. And I said, now here you are. I don't know how many years. How many eight nine. And I said, the same. Jesus that you said you believed in. He is real. And I'm not telling you that you won't be a make a it won't make cause it won't be a struggle. But when you accept him, what all these places you think you want to go and all the opportunity that you haven't had and so on and so forth, he will provide. So I prayed with him and offered him the Lord. He didn't go on and make a commitment. And I said to him, I said, as long as you decide to be where you are, he was telling me all the things that were wrong. I said, well, as long as you decide to stay where you are, why don't you move? It is. It is. Why don't you move? All I'm saying is there's a road. That, that was a street called Straight. You can go down and find the livelihood. Yes. But you got to move. Yes. Praise God. There's an adoption agency, but you have to move. God. And the move is to say, Lord, yes. I give up no on me. Yes. 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 I'm accepting you, Lord. What would you have me? Let's stand. Old taste and sin. The word from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is this. Come unto me all ye that labor and I will labor. And I will give you rest. I will give you what you need in life. What you need in life. Right now, tell the Lord, say, Lord, come to my life. 
Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Guide us in the way. Yes. You have us to go. Yes. And all of God's children say.